Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Artist Works Holiday Music Special. I am Patricia Butler. I'm the co-founder of Artist Works, and I'm joined today by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the Artist Works faculty who are going to be sharing some of their uh, favorite holiday music, and they're going to be playing the song that says to them it's holiday time, it's Christmas time, it's Hanukkah. Um, all of that. And so we are going to have a nice uh, variety of music played today. We're starting out with our bluegrass guys. We've got some jazz. We've got some country. We just have some really great stuff. And I'm so glad that you have decided to join us today. Um, we are also kicking off our biggest sale of the year. Uh, so make sure you keep an eye on uh, the scroll that's going by and and you can just get into artist works much more affordably and have access to these incredible musicians. So I don't want to waste another moment. I would like to introduce you to the person that is going to be my co-host today, uh, and that is Mr. Guthrie Trapp. Hi, Guthrie. Hey, Patricia. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm very excited that it's almost Christmas time uh, and we've never done one of these before. And so I'm really anxious to get the guys on here and um, uh, see what kind of music they're going to share. But you're going to play, too, aren't you? You're going to talk with us and play as well. Absolutely. I'd love to. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, and you're down in Nashville, right? I'm in East Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. And um, it's, it's a nice chilly night here in the, in the holiday spirit. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Patricia, I always have a pleasure doing these live streams with you. It's always so much fun. Yeah. Well, you're a wonderful co-host. I'm looking forward to it. Let's just jump right in. Right. Um, our, our first uh, guests here are Michael Daves, uh, Sierra Hall, uh, Daryl Anger, and Chris Eldridge, also known as Critter. <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> Howdy, howdy. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> Daryl. Nice um, yeah, it's nice to see everybody. Oh, my gosh. Well, I know you all have um, specific music that you wanted to play. And Michael, I, I thought maybe we would start with you. But um, Guthrie, do you have any questions for Michael? Or should we just let him get started? What do you think? Yeah, let's let him get started. And then we can ask him questions later. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Go ahead, Michael. Take it All right. away. All right. Well, I'm going to, you know, I, I grew up uh, doing Christmas music uh, with my family. You know, we, we did church every every Christmas Eve. My dad led the folk mass. and uh, But I'm going to share a song, actually. This is a bluegrass standard by Tex Logan, who's one of the uh, the greatest bluegrass fiddlers and one definitely one of my favorites. Um, he wrote this this song called Christmas Time's Coming, which Bill Monroe recorded in back in the 50s. And it's kind of become a good bluegrass standard. And the the, the memory associated with, with this song for me is actually not from childhood, but for me about 10 or so years ago. Um, as you know, Artist Works own Tony Trishka uh, does uh, great holiday shows uh, every year. I've done a couple of those with them. And, and we got to do one with, in New Jersey with Tex. Uh, himself uh fiddling with us so it was just a, a huge thrill for me to get to to sing christmas times to come in with with actual tex logan um who has since passed but uh, amazing fiddler great song and i think i'm uh in, in bluegrass style I'm, I'm gonna try to get people involved here so i know daryl uh and and sierra are gonna be the stand-ins for for tex and, and bill monroe uh in in your own interpretations of course and uh we'll we'll see what happens and then critter you can take one too if you want but uh <laughs> we'll see what happens i'm gonna drop to you why not yeah yeah get, get a good good old low Me too. solo there we're, we're drop d twins today all right all right, so I'll get it started here. Mm. Christmas times are coming, Christmas times are coming, Christmas times are coming, I know I'm going home. Can't you hear them bells ringing, ringing, joy, all them, hear them singing. When it's snowing, I'll be going back to my country home. Christmas time's coming, Christmas time's coming, Christmas time's coming, I know I'm going home. Daryl. Yeah. 
Yeah. Snowflakes falling, my old home is calling. Tall pines are humming, Christmas time's coming. Can't you hear the bells ringing, ringing? You'll all them hear them singing. When it's snowing, I'll be going back to my country home. Christmas time's coming, Christmas time's coming, Christmas time's coming, I know I'm going home. Sierra! Job. You guys did a great job. That's really good. I like the way you tossed it around. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Try, of, trying to make it a jam session as much as we can. I love it. Yeah, Daryl, man, so Daryl, you got the. I know you had the Tex Logan stance. <laughs> <laughs> he did. And, and uh, Tex is really amazing with the stance, and he, he was this 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 very like feral fiddler, just total total animal nature but his day job uh was he was a physicist at bell labs and like invented like the algorithms behind the M mri machine and like wow. digital reverb and he played with bill monroe on the weekends and would ho host these epic house parties and and he's just one of the greatest bluegrass fiddlers super brainy too super brainy <laughs> i would say so it sounds like he is <laughs> yeah but, oh thank God. you thank you for the stance daryl yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you you talked to us a little bit about the significance of uh, that particular song. Was there anything in your youth, Michael, um, that really um, any music that kind of signified? Okay, it's it's time to get out the tree, or um, yeah, it's... yeah. Well, it was all, it was all the 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 music we'd, we'd prepare for church. Uh, you know, it would it was uh, my, my dad would have. Um, rehearsals for for like the folk choir uh you know in the month leading up to christmas and that's like okay yep that that that's when it's time yeah. um yeah well thank you so much for sharing that music with us it, it certainly has a special memory for you and i'm glad that yeah. daryl could help you reminisce there with the visual oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 was, that was spot on <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much well i think um thank you but, uh, Guthrie, I don't want to cut you off. Did you have any any more questions? Did you have any questions before we go on to Sierra? You know, I'd like to know where everybody's coming from in the world here. What part of the world's everybody uh, at right now? I'm in Napa. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm in Williams. Uh, yeah, I'm in New York City. I, I was supposed to be in Georgia, where I'm from, but I'd, I had to to cancel the trip for uh, you know. And I, I know, think the rest of us are in. 
the rest of us are in in Nashville. Are we all in? Uh, wait, Guthrie, you and I are in East Nashville. Not sure exactly where we are relatively to each other in East Nashville. But okay, let's find out. So I live right behind Cafe Rose. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I'm also walking distance to Cafe Rose. I walk You're... there for matcha in the morning sometimes. You're kidding I'm, me? I'm bougie. No. All right. Well, we'll we'll figure this out offline. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we don't need to give the we don't need to give the internet the you know precise uh, latitude and longitude here. No way, no way, Chris. What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know what? I, I forget that, but my mother's maiden name. Um, she was, yeah. Okay, Sierra. Uh, Sierra, can you give us some credit card information? <laughs> I don't have it by memory. One second. <laughs> so everybody's in Nashville. Okay, what part of Nashville are, are, are you guys in, Daryl? Uh, we're kind of in the southern, sort of uh, eastern, southern, sort of northern, western kind of part. Okay, nice. I like that. <laughs> eastern, southern, sort of, kind of. <laughs> so I think what Daryl's saying is he, he doesn't know about Napa. I don't know well enough yet where I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, so patricia what this tells me is we need to do a festival called and we'll just call it from nashville to napa i'm in there you go i'm in i love it all right thanks for going happy holidays everybody this is tony trishka i wish you all the best and a very happy new year now that guy is not from nashville <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I think we're going to hear from Sierra next. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Awesome. So let's let's hear what Sierra has to say, um, and and hear about her uh, her Christmas music. So take it away, Sierra. Yeah. Well, I'm going to play um, just one of my favorite Christmas tunes. This is one I learned a few years back, and it's one you always hear when you're out, you know, running around doing your Christmas shopping or that just always pops on the radio. But um, when I really dug into it, I was like, this is such a fun mandolin tune. This is Sleigh Ride. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was thanks. really some awesome playing. Oh, thanks, Patricia. It's such a fun tune. You know, I just, 
really loved digging into that one a while back. Yeah, you do something percussive there. Maybe uh, maybe your fellow musicians here know what you're doing. I don't. What's going on there? <laughs> I'm literally just hitting my instrument. <laughs> oh, good old mandolin punch. <laughs> Waking it up there. Hey, yeah. wake up. Nothing fancy, we, we just literally, literally yeah. just using the side of my knuckle to uh, make a little, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a little knock. Okay, so there's no accessory anybody needs to buy then. No, hey, just, hey just, Sierra, just, what was that? Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. You know, with eight people, you just kind of got to jump in where you can get in here. So um, I, I'm curious about the arrangement. Is that your arrangement? Where did you, did you borrow that from somebody? I'm just curious. It's actually um, based off of the original. Um, that's okay. the one, the original key of B flat and just actually sitting down with the original recording. Um, what is the guy's name? Um, uh, shoot, I can't even think of the guy's name. So Anderson. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Every, anyway, if you heard it, you would. It, now. it would be the one. Right. It would be the one that's recognizable to you if you heard it, like the old, you know, with with the full orchestration. Leroy Anderson, yeah. Thank if if they that, only had Howard. a hand, if they only had a handheld device we, device we could ask questions to, we'd be in business. I know, you know? I know. I'm like Anderson, <laughs> yeah, Leroy Anderson, and so yeah, I just sat down with that original recording and just was like blown away by just how how the melody moved around so much, but it's still. It, it's just still so musical, but how the key yeah. centers move, and I just, I just loved it. I thought it was so fun. The, that and first you, chord change in the bridge is so cool. You know when it goes. Oh, I know. It's I know. It's so great. That was a yeah. great choice. And you played and that very whole mandoliny. <laughs> and it's in, and you played that in B flat on the mandolin, which I'm going to tell you right now, folks, is not easy. <laughs> well, it is for Sierra. <laughs> well, no, no, no. <laughs> Lots of practice. Right. I I know that um, some of you are on a tight schedule, and um, Michael Daves, I I know we need to say goodbye to you, but we want to say happy holidays and thank you so much for joining us. You too. It's so great to see and hear all of you, and I wish we could be together in a room, and hopefully we'll be able to do that sometime soon and make a bunch of music. But uh, happy holidays to all of you and everyone who's watching. All right. Thank Bye, you. Michael. Good, Good to see you. Michael. Take Good care. And I think we have a little holiday greeting from one of our other fellow uh, Artist Works faculty now as well. This is Brian Sutton, and I hope you have a very musical holiday season. Oh, isn't oh, that yeah. sweet? <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, I think you're up. Are we going to talk? We're going to talk a little bit about uh, holiday music and you, okay? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I too am one of the many uh, people who have experienced holiday music, and you know, I've actually worked on three or five or eleven holiday uh, recordings, and and uh, you know, it's. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's a beautiful time of year to listen to music, whether it's coming out of a speaker in your grocery store or you know in your uh, living room, or you're just sitting around the fire or in the fire or wherever. You know, <laughs> it's uh, just a lovely thing. And uh, so I figured, <clears throat> since this is um, you know where this is the bluegrass section of the show, uh, I figured I'd do something a little bluegrassy too. Great. And uh, this is kind of cool because. It actually is a Bill Monroe tune, song, tune. Yeah, it's a tune. Uh, it's one of the Bill Monroe's later works, in which he, you know, it's got movements. It's got uh, many sections to it. And, uh, you know, Christmas, as you know, can also be a time for self-reflection and evaluating what went on during the year. And um, just, uh, you know, trying to be be better person and and uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of behavior issues attached to Christmas and and uh, it's true. Of course, one of the great uh, great stories that it connects with that, of course, is is Charles Dickens' uh, Christmas Carol, and uh, Bill Monroe just happened to write a fiddle tune uh, called Old Ebenezer Scrooge, and one of the great things about this tune is it does have sort of a progression from from kind of minor sort of very you know kind of old celtic sounding to a little bit more modern 
Yeah, so uh, Sharon and I, um, Sharon has worked, you know, has a great version of Ebenezer Scrooge. So I kind of drafted her to. Nice. Kinda and help who, me. who are you joined yep. by? This Play is this. Sharon Gilchrist. Sorry. Who's, who are you playing with? Oh, I'm playing with the, the legendary Sharon Gilchrist. Very who, nice. Uh, growing up in Texas, had a lot of uh, Christmas um, opportunities there, you know, in the, in the deep snow that they get down there. Yeah, about once a year. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm I'm lucky to have a, a very strong accompanist on this to help me get through it, and uh, yeah, if I can just keep this thing out of my face, I should be <laughs> doing good here. Well, you're looking and sounding good. Okay, right. Okay. That's perfect. <laughs> All right. That's just, okay. That's better. Okay. So, old Ebenezer Scrooge by Bill Monroe. Okay. <laughs> Was awesome. 
awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! And that's right. Applause, applause. Hey. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, that was really great. Thank you so much. And what, tell me the name of that again. Was it just Ebenezer Scrooge or is old there more to it? Ebenezer Scrooge. Old the, Ebenezer This is from Bill Monroe's old period where every every tune had old <laughs> in the title. I see. Okay. Is that are, true? That's <laughs> so the, uh, are you related to the famous Gilchrist mandolin builder? that we are uh, probably related back, you know, if you go as far back as to the 1300s in Scotland. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. So, yes. We, we call so, yeah, okay. Cousins. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Call them your cousins, I was, right? I was just curious. I thought it might be a coincidence that you're playing the mandolin and your last name is Gilchrist. Yeah. And it's funny because Sharon has two Gilchrist mandolins. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Is that, that's like Taylor Swift playing a Taylor guitar, right? I mean... <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's funny. <laughs> I'm so glad you can join us. Uh, and are, do you guys have any, or Daryl, do you have any like Christmas related um, musical memories that, you know, maybe you had with your family where you guys um, played around the Christmas tree or I don't know, is there anything that you did in your family that was, well, was um, only, music around I the was holidays? the only person in my family that was really... Um, playing music, uh, called upon to play music, although my grandmother uh, was an enthusiastic piano player. But uh, yeah, um, most of my Christmas music memories are um, consist of, of being of, of July recording studio. recording CDs. Yeah, that's when you make a Christmas record. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> got to be weird. That's got to be really strange. Well, it's you know the studio is a is a great place because you know you can be it can be any time of day, any time of year, anything. It's you're really you can just imagine yourself if outside the orbit of Jupiter or anywhere. I mean, the studio <laughs> is a wonderful place to uh, just to put on your Santa hat and you're good to go. Is that why they put a window well, yeah, now in the it looks studio? Like a cat hat, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say, Guthrie? I said, is that why they don't put windows in studios? They don't want you to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, like, it's like, like Vegas. They don't, know what, don't want you to know what time it is or anything. Yeah, they, you don't know what time it is. They yeah. Just keep, keep recording. <laughs> just keep playing. Keep recording. Oh, Lordy. Well, thank you, Daryl, so much. And also, Sharon, for joining us, but also for, for sharing your music with us. I think next up is, is Critter. Chris Eldridge, so Howdy. don't go away. Howdy. Yeah, hey. How you doing, Chris? Oh, I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. I awesome. don't have snow, do you? No, we do not have snow. I saw, I was just in um, Northeast Ohio and I saw, um, I saw frost on the ground and that, that was, you know, that looked like snow for a second. I probably could have picked some up and gotten <laughs> it into a ball, but I didn't. Well, it, it may come your way. You never know. Yeah, it probably will. So um, tell us a little bit about the music you're going to share with us today. Oh, well, I just, um, I, I was going to play Silent Night because, um, I don't know, this is, there's so many great Christmas songs. I mean, it's like, they're just these incredible classic melodies. Um, but this one, for whatever reason, ever since I was a kid, um, I don't know, I just, I hear this song and I kind of picture being curled up like at home under a blanket with a fire. It just, it just feels like the... Uh, like the the homey side of Christmas, yeah. the homey familial everything is a good side of Christmas. So uh, so yeah, that's that's that. Great. Well, we'd love to hear it. Thank you. Cool.
wow. Yeah, critter. Oh, thanks. That's that's my word. I was I was just gonna say thank you. You know, I I just have had a hard time getting into the Christmas spirit this year, but that that worked. <laughs> thank Glad you. Glad to hear it. It's a, yeah, that's such a uh, I don't know that that song always just makes me think of like just being at home, just being at home. Yeah, and everything's quiet and good and nice. Yeah, well, I've got a kid in the air flying over the U.S. on his way here, and I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much for that. Welcome. Beautiful, beautiful. So I think we're going to be joined now by um, Howard Levy. Hey, Howard. Hey, how's everybody? Hi, Howard. Oh, we're nice yeah. and mellow. <laughs> Everybody's staying warm around the Christmas trees. <laughs> well, yeah. How about you, I, though, Howard? Where are you? You're... You're Chicago, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cold. Yeah, <laughs> the usual. Not as cold as usual, though. Actually, no snow, which is uh, very unusual here. Um, but uh, it's cold enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think you've ever played with any of these guys, have you? Oh, sure, I have. Oh, yeah. Who have I, you, I, Critter, Daryl? You played with Daryl. Oh yeah, and, and with Sierra a number of times. Yeah. Okay, tell. I, yeah. I need to know more about this then. But uh, no one else, not yet. Super fun. But uh, it's been I have a too secret long, for though, you. Howard. <laughs> that, that's true. I, I almost uh, we almost played together recently, but I'm uh, I'm still being a chicken about playing live. Well, I don't even want to talk about that aspect of reality. Was this through Bela? Is this? Um, were you going to play with? Oh, okay. But but uh, she invited me to come and sit in with her when she would uh, come to Chicago. Very and, nice. Uh, and and play various venues here and it was a delight really oh i wish, we, nice. I wish we could do it more often and you know i play a we little bit of mandolin someday. so i greatly admire her amazing effortless skill on the instrument oh yeah oh. well yes. all of you guys are incredibly virtuous <laughs> oh that's sweet very mm. sweet very sweet well welcome to uh the holiday music special howard we're happy to have you here, and uh, you're going to kind of segue us a little bit into the jazz section. Um, so um, thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Critter, and thank you, Sierra, for joining us and for sharing your music um, with us and also your holiday memories. Really happy to see you and to share this time with you. Thank you, Patricia and Guthrie and everybody Excellent. else. It's been great to see you all. Yeah. I look forward to hearing you, Howard. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. A, a secret. I was actually playing along with you on harmonica while you were oh, good. playing Silent Night. <laughs> oh, man. I wish we unmuted it. It was that very was beautiful. beautiful. Oh, yeah. Nice. Well, you guys are welcome to stay behind stage. Maybe we'll see you a little bit later. Cool. Okay, guys. Yeah. Thanks. See you later. Thank you. Okay, Sierra. Now it's the three of us. Guthrie, you do, do you play some jazz, don't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, other people say I do. <laughs> <laughs> no you say no i just i yeah i i can get around in 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 play over changes but i wasn't raised in and um or, or went to school you know i didn't go to school as a I didn't learn any jazz theory or anything like that but but um but yeah i mean i can play the, the like the feel and the flavor of jazz yeah i, I feel i feel really insecure answering that question uh, with sorry. howard with howard leaving i know and i know the piano i know it's kind of crazy but you know <laughs> howard plays many genres um but oh, yeah. with, i'm a with, big i'm a big fan i've been listening to the flectones since i was a little kid you know mm. the mm. most recent i wish album. i could say the same <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the most recent album, um, My Bluegrass Heart, if you haven't heard it yet, Guthrie, oh mm. my, oh my, that is quite the masterpiece right there. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to having some downtime in the next, um, you know, whenever coming up and being able to listen to some new music, catch up on some records. It is so, it's like friendly. It's like, and you can hear the banter of Sierra and, you know, Brian and Tony and Noam. You can, it's just, it really is. I don't, I almost used the word lovely. Bela's probably thinking, oh God, that's <laughs> not the word he wants me to use, but it is really, a, it, I think it's a masterpiece. I think it's really a great piece of music and I'm so happy so many people are part of it, but still, you know, Howard and, and the Flectones are just, you know, amazing to watch. And it's that nice, I think, you know, genre agnostic music. It's it's jazz, but it isn't. So it's 
nice that you're here, Howard, and you can cross genres for us too. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, in terms of the tune I'm going to play, uh, uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, it's just, as a jazz musician, you know, in the past, especially, I used to play a lot of Christmas parties, and I had to learn all these tunes to play them. And, uh, yeah, I grew up listening to a lot of these tunes, and it's really different listening to it and playing it. Because when you play it, you get inside the tune, and then the lyrics start meaning more to you when you're expressing them through mm -hmm. performing it. And uh, yeah, this is a beautiful tune. I mean, the, wow. lyrics, the lyrics are so wistful. And uh, sometimes this cold weather kind of drives us inward and makes us reflect on things. Uh, a lot of times uh, the music I relate to very heavily at this time of year is like, like Renaissance music, you know, things that are in... Uh, like old English stuff, but there's also that wistful American sort of pop jazz thing that I, that I also really like at this time of the year. And uh, so if you want mind, I'll do some sort of spontaneous version of that tune right now. Spontaneous. Yeah, that'd be great. Howard, I think your volume got turned up a little bit. It was crackling oh. on our end. Um, oh, really? Maybe turn I, your main I, down a little bit. I turned it down, but okay, I'll turn it down some more. Yeah, a little bit. There you okay. go. Well, here, here is Howard. Okay. Um. okay.
Awesome, Howard. That was great. Thank you. Uh, my question to you is, um, how do you separate your brain to do those two different things? I mean, you could do three or four if you if you could. I mean, if, you know, but how do you separate your brain like that? I wish I knew. <laughs> no. uh, you know, I just get carried away. Two things, really. And it's a very good question. I get carried away by the spirit of the music first. Mm -hmm. And it takes over. You know, no matter what I plan, something else always comes out. I always try to reach for the spirit. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that I see the harmonica in my mind as a piano keyboard. Wow. Because the instrument's invisible, right? It, mm -hmm. You can't see it anyway. So I started playing piano when I was eight years old. I started mm -hmm. playing harp when I was 18. And so I'm, I'm closing my eyes and I'm going, what notes am I playing? Of course, like, like you would visualize music on a guitar, on a guitar mm -hmm. fretboard. And I would see it as this, you know, you know, so that's how I do what I do on this instrument. Wow. And so playing them together was kind of, inevitable because i would be in bands where i play both the instruments like the flag tones and i tried to play as much as possible uh, you know simultaneously in the studio of course not mm -hmm. always but then when we would go out live <laughs> I, you know i had to do it to some extent and so right. it forced me you know playing hundreds of shows to to get better at that so that's uh, that's pre pretty much the answer to the question and and so I will share this with with the the audience members, uh, and I'm almost ninety nine percent sure I've got this right. But uh, if if you don't know this, Howard is playing chromatic harmonica on a diatonic harp, right? And can you explain that to them, Howard? How I, that's amazing is what it is. <laughs> well, what it is is this instrument was designed as a folk instrument in Germany in the nineteenth century, early nineteenth century, and they have this weird tuning. And if you blow on it, you just get the notes of the major arpeggio of the key. This is a G harp. Three octaves. And if you draw on it, they left out some notes, the in-between notes on the bottom, so you could get the five chord. And in the middle, they have all the rest. So, And it turns backwards on the top. It's really goofy. But uh, the black blues players are the ones who discovered you could bend notes. And that was an absolute accident. The Germans had no idea they were inventing this wow. part of the instrument. They thought it was a mistake, you know? And so then when I came along wanting to play blues and being frustrated that I couldn't play all the notes that other instruments could play, mm -hmm. uh, I was 18 years old and I just irrationally assumed that the instrument had to have all the notes on it since it was an instrument. <laughs> That's what wow. I said. And yeah. so I couldn't play simple guitar licks like, you know, that note wasn't there. Right. So I just figured out a way of getting the seven missing tones by bending in the opposite direction where you couldn't wow. bend it. And I called it overblows and overdraws. This is when I was 18. And right. I've been working on it ever since. But You're uh, amazing. You it's know, it's amazing, Howard. I love the instrument. That's why I've devoted yeah. so much time to it. I just think it's soulful and beautiful and expressive in a way that uh, really touches my heart when I play. And I just figured it was worth all the effort. And I know you do so many things other than the flectones, but I'm connected to the flectones because my, my family, my mom and dad are downstairs right now at my house listening to this. And so ah. uh, my, my parents and then my family were huge new grass revival fans growing up. And so got to know who Bela Fleck and Sam Bush and all those guys were. Well, then it was a natural progression to, to be hip to the fleck tones when Bela departed into that band. And of course, Howard was a, a integral part of that. And, and if you haven't checked out Bela Fleck and the fleck tones, that's a great place to hear Howard just yeah. playing every Go song. Go to town. That's right. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, thank, you, a... thank you for sharing your music, Howard and stay, stay with us. Um, don't go away. Either one of you, we have a greeting now from um, Peter Erskine. Uh. Hi, this is Peter Erskine. I want to wish you all a safe and healthy and happy holiday season. You all stay well out there 
And thank you for making the world a better place by making music. All right. Uh, I think in, um, by way of bridging gaps here and jumping genres, I believe we also are going to hear from Katarina Lichtenberg uh, mm. from Germany. And um, she is going to give us her holiday greeting and play some music for us. So we are going to hear from Katarina now. Hello, everybody. I'm Katharina Lichtenberg. I teach the classical mandolin on artist works, and I'm so happy to be here on the holiday special, the Christmas concert. And uh, Christmas is so um, big here in Germany, where I am. And um, yeah, so I'm happy to, to show you a little bit something from my world. Um, yeah, usually the whole month before Christmas is already a preparation for this big holiday with all the four advents we have every Sunday. And um, then it's uh, lighting every Sunday a candle and then second Sunday two candles and then three candles and then four candles and then the Santa Claus is coming. And so it's a big deal and we have those Christmas markets here in Germany where you can have the glue wine, the hot red wine and uh, a little sausage with uh, mustard and whatever. So it's really a cozy time because you kind of have to survive those German winters. And I guess that's why they invented this um, uh, celebration. And um, yeah, a very big thing in my childhood was, was, of course, also listening to um, music and especially Johann Sebastian Bach. So my parents uh, were big Baroque music lovers and Johann Sebastian Bach was a big uh, composer in our house. So we listened a lot in the holiday time to uh, him and his music. And so that's why I choose for today a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. Uh, it's from the third cello suite, the Prelude. And uh, it's original for cello. And the cello is tuned uh, a fifth and an octave lower than the mandolin. So I decided for this reason to play my American mandola so that I'm in the same tuning uh, like the original uh, piece uh, for cello and uh, so I hope you enjoy and uh, I'm happy to be here and thank you for watching and have very very beautiful peaceful holiday days and happy happy new year and stay healthy okay and lots of music bye bye
she's really something. That's an incredible talent right there. Yeah, we'll applaud for Katarina. I Amazing. Think, I think she's the only professor of mandolin in the world. <laughs> wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And that was a, that was a mandola, by the way. Mandola. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think she might have said that in the beginning. Well, mm -hmm. obviously she couldn't couldn't join us because she's in Germany with her husband Mike Marshall, and the timing just would have been bad. But um, uh, I really appreciate her sending her greetings and sharing her music with us. So we have yet another faculty artist, right, Howard? Yes. Be... George. What? George who? <laughs> George uh, Harrison? No, George Witte. George Witte. George, George Witte is, a, is one of the most amazing musicians in America, I would say. Uh, I first became acquainted with his work from uh, Randy Brecker and I did some touring together a while back. And uh, Randy put out an album called 34th and Lex that uh, George uh, produced and did a whole bunch of uh, uh, synthesizer and sequencing work on. And it was remarkable. I just, yeah. I just couldn't believe the, the work that he did, as well as just you know his playing. Yeah, and, he's uh, phenomenal. And and the fact that that artist works has him as the jazz piano teacher. It, it, it's such a fantastic choice because he's not like a standard jazz guy at all. He's a really far out person, and he's written orchestrations for Herbie Hancock. I mean, I know. His, his range is just immense. And he's yeah. a fantastic keyboard player with tons of chops. He can play with anyone. Uh, I really admire him, and and he's a he's a, a wonderful guy too, and he loves teaching. So oh, I I can't think of any anything negative to say. <laughs> well, let's not, let's just let's just listen to George then. <laughs> yeah, he's just great. Hi, and welcome to our Artist Works Holiday House concert. Uh, I'm George Witte. I'm the professor of jazz piano at artistworks.com. And I'm going to be playing a song called Christmas Time is Here, which is a beautiful now standard um, written by Vince Guaraldi in 1965. It's the opening piece on a Charlie Brown Christmas, which, of course, is probably the great classic Christmas special of all time. Played beautifully by his trio, Vince Guaraldi. Uh, Jerry Grinelli, I think, is on drums, and, and Fred Marshall, I believe, is on bass. Um, very down-tempo, atmospheric thing, you know, kind of stirring the soup on the snare drum. Uh, and I think the thing that first appealed to me about this when I heard it was the harmonic motion in it and the jazz chords. You know, if you're a jazz lover, that sound is something that I think you're kind of born with an extra chromosome or something that makes you appreciate that. But this is a perfect example. You wouldn't really expect on a Christmas special to have the kind of this kind of thing going. Uh, and, you know, that much jazz in it. But what a perfect marriage of things. I often hold Vince Guaraldi out to my students as an example of somebody who's a great swinging spare piano player who lays way back behind the beat and really digs in in the coolest way. So we study him, even stuff that's not from the Charlie Brown special. At this point, having heard it my entire life, literally since my earliest memories, I also have a very sentimental attachment to it. The changes are great to play on, really fun. Um, you know, people request it. And Vince always wanted to write a standard, and he really wrote a dandy with this thing. So without further ado, here's Christmas Time is Here by Vince Guaraldi. <laughs> Thank you. 
Happy holidays from all of us here at Artist Works, and however you celebrate, have a really great holiday season this year. This is Nathan East, and on behalf of everyone over here at Artist Works, we would just like to wish you all a safe, healthy, and happy holiday season. All right, that was fantastic i mean george just has such a beautiful touch and then nathan i mean he should just i don't know do voiceovers he's just got such a soothing <laughs> voice doesn't he he really does just gorgeous My i just God. saw him with eric clapton here a couple months ago at the bridgestone oh, did you really got to go yeah. back and he got me back and to say hi to steve gadd and everybody it was awesome Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Guthrie, you've been on here with me asking everybody else questions. Tell us a little bit about the music in your holidays. Well, um, I was raised on the Alabama Gulf, uh, Gulf Coast. I call it Florabama. It was right on the state line uh, down by the Gulf of Mexico. And we had, um, I'm an only child, so it's just me and my mom and dad. But when my grandmother was alive, we had these big, every holiday revolved around a big party that revolved around music. And so we had all the musicians in that in that area that that came over and we'd have, you know, we'd have um, whether it was Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. It, it was always a big gathering and it was always a lot of music. Everything always revolved around a giant circle of people playing uh, all afternoon and into the night. Uh, bluegrass, Irish music, folk music, singer songwriters um all you know mainly acoustic for the most part and so as a that's how i was raised and so from as long as i can remember uh i was always in an in, 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 in an environment where there was a lot of instruments laying around and um and so i you know it was just i i, I don't know if anybody's born with a gift of music uh, but i think that you're definitely a product of your environment and that was my environment and so the holidays to me have always revolved around a, a big social gathering with a lot of uh, with a lot of music. And so um, and that kind of, you know, describes how I got into music and in, in, in general, you know, as a whole. And so and I I, uh, I do like to try to to teach and, and preach a little bit about the um, the spirit of making music, like much like to what Howard was saying, where you know, a, a, a nice balance of concrete fundamentals, but also really getting into, you know, listening to great songs and great artists and like getting into the engine room of why we feel the way we do with certain music. Why do we gravitate so towards certain things? You know, you've got people that love heavy metal and you got people that love classical and you've got both and you've got everything in between. And so um, that's where I'm kind of at. I, I kind of, you know, okay. and one thing about that is being in Nashville uh, will also instill after being here for 20 years, it will also instill in you a tr true appreciation for great songs and mm -hmm. how important that is, you know, with as that a great song is a platform for us to be able to do whatever we do musically, vocally, lyrically, uh, you know, and all that stuff in company. Yeah. So, yeah, well, you're, you're, you usually I'm, you usually have a telecaster in your hand, but but not today. I, I thought I'd give you guys a break. And, okay, uh, and <laughs> well, tell us what you're gonna tell us what you're gonna play. This is my 1933 Gibson L uh, guitar, and um, I'm just gonna play a little uh, improvised version of uh, uh, "God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen." Is that do I have the title right? Is that yeah. right? Yeah, as far a, as I know from the I'm, hymnal, I don't have my hymnal right here, but I'm yeah, I think a, so. <laughs> I'm not a huge Christmas music aficionado, but. Uh, but but I love this song because uh, we actually recorded a version of this with Jerry Douglas years and years ago when I was playing and recording with him. Um, cool. And I'm I'm drawn to uh, uh, things that are that are uh, in a minor key. I love minor keys, which you know this would be a major, and this would be a minor. 
Ah, beautiful. A little darker. So uh, I'm drawn to that. So uh, w without further ado, I'll, I'll play a little bit of this for you guys. Mm. they say about you you can play anything that was <laughs> that was gorgeous Guthrie, oh, I, if you can stay with us for just one more moment sure. uh, we have a holiday greeting from um martin taylor and then i'd like to just come come back to you for a moment nice happy holidays everyone and merry christmas ah uh, so I want to also bring on um, an, one of your fellow faculty, Mr. Keith Wyatt. Hey, Keith. I think you're muted, Keith. Unmute yourself. There he is. There you go. Hey, <laughs> there he is. I'm all over the technology here. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you again. It's good um, to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Guthrie has to leave us soon, but I thought I'd have the two two of you on here since you're our uh our um rock and guitarist and join us. But you guys have played together before <laughs> there you go yeah <laughs> rock and round a christmas tree uh-huh there we <laughs> go Lord. yeah well, guthrie i really appreciate you spending time with us tonight and helping me MC, help me co-host i really appreciate it always a pleasure well, I hope you have a wonderful holiday and um, enjoy dinner with the folks. And um, we'll be seeing you very soon, I hope. Thank you very much. I uh, hope everybody has a, a, a great holiday season. Looking forward to 2022. And uh, we'll see you guys next year. All right. Come to Napa. Come see us. we Will do. Thank <clears throat> you. All right. Take care. All right. Hey, Keith. Hey, Patricia. So... You've been sitting around watching everybody else play. Uh, man, I, I got to say, I am like in awe. <laughs> everybody I've heard, I mean, those bluegrass guys and I gals, know. I mean, it's just like, oh, man. And then, you know, uh, Howard and George, um, Katarina, I mean, it's it's awesome. I mean, amazing what... what what they uh, can do, and especially I look at the mandolin, it's like this little tiny instrument, you know, it's like the ukulele, it's like, 
Is I know. A, it's a toy, you know, but no. <laughs> and well, then Howard with the harp. I mean, what he's done with the harp is is just incredible. I mean, I, I've listened to all the blues guys, you know, but Howard has taken it to a different level. It's yeah, you know, it's really phenomenal. For sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've you've certainly had your uh, you've you've played an important part in a lot of musicians' lives, having been you know a teacher at the Musicians Institute for so long. And I think that um, Paul Gilbert was one of your students, and I believe we actually have a holiday greeting here from from Paul Gilbert. Is that? Let's hear it. Let's all hear All right, it. let's let's yeah. do it. Hey everybody, it's Paul Gilbert. I'm happy to be a teacher at Artist Works, teaching rock and roll. I'm gonna play some Frosty the Snowman. I start out with a D note and play the Forbidden Licks. Seven, eight, one, two, three, go. let me play my guitar for you on uh, Christmas or around it and uh, come on over to my rock and roll guitar school we have such a good time you wouldn't believe it and that's the whole idea isn't it
All right. Merry Christmas, whatever, or whatever you like. All right. Thank you very much. Rock and roll. <laughs> Damn, pup. This is Jared Nichols. Happy holidays, everyone. Oh, my God. Oh, pa Paul just, like, chewed up the furniture, didn't he? I mean. Well, he melted uh, Frosty's face off, for starters. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is all <clears throat> your fault both of those guys are your fault it's what you got uh, started at the musicians i i take no no credit or blame for either one i tell you no they <laughs> they showed up they showed up fully fledged you know uh i i don't think i had anything to do with it but uh oh. yeah it was it was funny uh you know paul was a teenager basically when he came to to git guitar institute back yeah. in the day you know and um you know he was already just a raucous you know i mean you 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 tell everything paul does he's got the imagination the sense of humor it's like we'll take it a step further now nah, let's take it 10 steps further you know and he's been like that as long as i've known him and so he would uh he had a band called racer x and they would play these clubs and back in the 80s la yeah. shred you know paradise and uh so paul would be out on the weekend playing to a thousand uh screaming metal fans and then come in monday to go to class you know yeah <laughs> and finish up his single string it's like ah yeah paul listen i think you got to get this figured out already but uh yeah he's a, he's a he's a wonderful creative uh guy he's a he's a he's a dedicated uh educator as well yeah. which i really admire well and you are too i mean you really are too so we we're very thankful that you're on our faculty and and also thankful that you're here you know sharing well, your music and and also your holiday memory tell me tell me a little bit about holiday music in your life well you know i didn't grow up in a musical family i i i envy the the folks who did i look at all these nashville guys i don't know if you know uh john sebastian wrote a song years and years ago called nashville cats and he says nashville cats been playing since these babies nashville cats been working <laughs> since these three you know there's 16,552 guitar players in Nashville. You know, it, it's true. <laughs> they all grow yeah. up. Yeah. They grow up playing the stuff, and, and it just it comes so naturally. Well, I, I didn't have that, um, that privilege. My folks liked music as listeners, but uh, they weren't musically inclined. So I just kind of got into rock and roll as a kid, you know, like, like everybody did. I remember seeing the Stones on TV, and they had hair, and it looked cool and uh, surf music and stuff like that. So I just kind of drifted into it. But, um, you know, as time went by, I got into blues. And of course, then I became aware of the blues repertoire, which uh, at, I didn't really hear when I was a kid. But uh, one of the, the singers that uh, really caught my attention was a guy named Charles Brown. And uh, Charles Brown, fascinating guy. He's, he's, he's the type of guy that I find really interesting because uh, we have a stereotype of, of blues musicians that they're rough and tough and, you know, drinking and fighting. No, <laughs> no, no, not so. I saw him, sure, yeah, but no, uh, you know, like Howlin' Wolf was a, an astute businessman. He got paid. Yeah, he was rough, but he got paid. He was a smart guy, you know. Same thing with, uh, uh, you know, Charles Brown was uh, raised around Houston, Galveston area, uh, he was a uh, he got a degree in chemistry and taught oh high gosh. school taught chemistry in high school then he got a gig uh, out on the west coast uh some kind of a like a mechanical kind of gig anyway he found his way down to la and uh he played piano well he had won a talent contest when he was a kid where he segued from uh like a chopin piece into a boogie woogie piece you know oh, wow. cause an uproar so extremely versatile guy educated guy and he came to L.A. and he, he hooked up with uh, uh, a guy named Johnny Moore. Johnny Moore was a guitar player. Had a band, uh, Johnny Moore's Three Blazers. And uh, they were playing clubs around L.A. And they, they hired Charles. And Charles was a fantastic piano player. But he developed this singing style, which was kind of whispery. And so he would sort of whisper the, the lyrics. And it was hugely influential. Now... Today, people never heard of Charles Brown, which is a crime. But yeah. in the 1940s, he was a he was a star. He was he was working the same clubs and sort of in the same ballpark with Nat King Cole. Nat was a piano player 
who sort of fell into singing and became known as a singer. But Charles, um, you know, he recorded a song called Driftin' Blues that was pretty popular. Then he, he did uh, Merry Christmas Baby. Yeah. And when I heard that, I thought, okay, I love blues, but man, what a great song. It's, it's, a, it's a Christmas song. Yeah. And people think about blues, oh, it's sad and down and dirty and all that. No, no, this is, it's a beautiful song with a blues sort of a spin to it. And uh, so Charles, right. you know, yeah, he influenced Ray Charles. Uh, he influenced Chuck Berry. He was a huge influence on popular music. Career went in the toilet for a number of years, but uh, uh, just to finish the story, uh, a student at the Guitar Institute named Danny Karen uh, left the school, went, got a gig with Clifton Chenier. He was the king of Zydeco accordion. Came back to the Bay Area where he's from, and he was one day he ran into a house painter and started talking. And the guy said, well, my name is Charles, you know. It was Charles Brown. And Danny oh said, wait a minute. You're Charles Brown and you're a house painter? So Danny helped get Charles back on his feet musically. And then um, he connected with Bonnie Raitt. And Bonnie was at the height of her success back then. And she got Charles to open for her. So it got his career back. And uh, thank goodness. Uh, yeah, fantastic, wow. fantastic musician. Yeah, well, so that's what you're playing yeah. for us today, right? Yeah, Merry Christmas, baby. You know, there's there's nothing mm -hmm. like it. You know, and All uh, right. uh, Charles, of course, did it with a trio and did it on the piano. But I'll do my level best to kind of cop the edges of it here. <laughs> Merry Christmas, baby. You sure did treat me nice. Got me some Bitcoin for Christmas. <laughs> Gotta update it. And now I'm living in paradise. Feeling mighty fine. Got good music on my radio. Yes, I'm feeling mighty fine. Got good music on my radio. But I just can't wait to kiss you, baby. Underneath that mistletoe. Here we go. came down the chimney about a half past three and laid all these pretty presents that you see before me. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, baby. Sure being good to me. I haven't had a drink all morning. But I'm all lit up just like a Christmas tree. Woo! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very just, nice. 
right. Just like the record. Just like the record. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Oh, and there's Howard Levy. He's still Oh, right no. Too. Oh, yeah. Howard. Oh, man, I'm embarrassed. Now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> that was great. I love that song, and you did you did it to a T. Yeah. No <laughs> I tried to steal the, the little edges of, of Charles. He's got his arrangement and his little piano parts. He does that, uh, you know... <laughs> does his little uh, Christmas tribute in the middle and all that. But hmm. yeah, what I love about Charles is that he kind of talks as much as he sings, real whispery like that, you know. Hmm. So for somebody who's not a virtuoso singer, you kind of, you know, can <laughs> latch on to it. Well, yeah. thank you both for joining us. And, and thanks everyone in the audience for sharing some of your evening with us. And I hope that we've helped to get you in the holiday spirit and we're happy to um, have music be in your life. And if you're interested in taking lessons from any of these master musicians, and honestly, they teach as masterfully as they play. We've been scrolling a, a promo code at the bottom for you where you can get in as inexpensively as ever. This is, we only do this once a year and you get incredibly affordable access to these musicians where you learn from all of the lessons that they've recorded plus what's unique about artist works is video exchange where you can actually send in a video to these guys uh, and they will respond with the video and we keep those two videos paired together and that's called the video exchange and you can see everybody's video exchange so um, you learn kind of uniquely here at artist works but one of the things that makes us um, i think a great institution is the access to these great musicians. And so I thank all of you for joining us, but I thank um, Keith and I thank Howard and I thank all of the other folks that were with us today. Michael, Dave, Sierra Hall, Daryl Langer, Chris Eldridge, oh my gosh, Guthrie Trapp. We just had so many people with us today. Um, it was really wonderful. And um, I hope that you all have a wonderful holiday season. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patricia. Bye, Howard, stay warm. <laughs> Ciao, ciao. I will. You too. Okay. Thanks all right. to all the behind the scenes guys too. I appreciate all the help with the videos. Have a happy all holiday. Right.